That's called the clone effect. Let's break it down. All right, so that effect might seem a little bit complicated, but it's actually really simple. It's just a clone or a hold frame effect of movement. Specifically, this time I was using myself, just walking along a path along stairs and then duplicating and freeze framing myself as I walked through the actual motion. Let me simplify everything and break it into the shooting and editing portions of the effect. So first let's talk about the actual shooting part and how you should set up your shot. So for this effect, you wanna make sure that you use a tripod and lock off your shot so that it doesn't move as you're shooting. And for this, I think I was at like an F10 aperture Essentially, because you have at the end, I come kind of close to the camera. I want to make sure there's not too much depth of field in the overall image. So for this, I chose I think F10. And basically, all you want to do is find a location that has a good amount of either vertical variation or if you want to do this effect horizontally, just make sure that you have space where if you duplicate yourself or duplicate whatever object that's moving, you can see the actual paused frames. So that's the reason I chose the staircase. The staircase is just a random one in a park we found. And I thought it'd be cool to start at the top of the stairs and run down the stairs. I tried to make sure that I went left to right, try to give a lot of variation in the movement so that the actual effect would look interesting in the end. Again, when you decide to use this effect, you don't necessarily need to use it on a person. You could use this on objects, animals, or just various different things. Just keep in mind that you need a locked off frame to make the editing a little bit easier. So once you have your shot, let's hop into the editing software and talk about the actual editing process. All right, so this is the clip that I have in its entirety. And as you can see, nothing crazy. We got a locked off shot again, and I'm just walking or jogging here left to right. And I started at the top left and I wanted to end in the bottom right to give some variation just so I can see this extra area here, which is where we're gonna duplicate ourselves. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pick where you want your first duplicated frame to be. And essentially the way that I make this easier for myself is I go in and in Premiere Pro, you have a time code here. I've decided that, hey, I want to duplicate myself or freeze myself every, let's say 20 frames. What I like to do is create a consistent integer or time between each frame, just so that when you speed ramp it later or do whatever you want, it just looks a little bit cooler. So two things that I do here are A, I go ahead and press M or I create a marker just so I know where I took this freeze frame from. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press export frame. And when you press export frame, what it'll do is it'll take a screenshot of the actual image that you have on your project and it'll create a JPEG of this actual freeze frame. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in a little bit. So I'm press okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go over 20 frames. You can do this manually, but I just like to go ahead and add 20 frames here. Next thing I'm gonna do is press M again and I'm taking another frame here. And I'm just gonna continue this. Uh, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 20 frames. Again, press M, grab a screenshot. I'm gonna go across the entire thing here and create multiple markers and just screenshot every 20 frames across this entire video file. All right, so once I have my 20 frames, go ahead and select it here. And as you can see, I've gone create markers for every time that I've actually made a screen grab. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is go into Adobe Photoshop. There's a bunch of different ways you could do this. What you could do is you could go ahead now and just rotoscope yourself out and add frame holds. But the way that I like to do this is it just it's just easier for me. You go into Photoshop, you'll see here that I have all of my images and I'm going to go ahead and select the first one. I'm just gonna drag it into Photoshop. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is go ahead and select and drag the rest of our stills on top of this. Next thing I like to do is make sure that you're rasterizing. What I've done here is just selected all layers, rasterize them. The next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and click and drag and make sure that you're on object selection. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select myself here. So I have just myself selected, Command Shift Inverse or Command Shift I to inverse your selections and just press delete. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this tediously for each thing here. All right, once you've got all 18 of your cutouts, Photoshop has a nifty tool where if you go to file, export, you can export layers to files. And basically, this will just export each of these layers as a separate Photoshop file. Once you've done that, let's hop back into Premiere Pro. All right, so once we're back in Premiere Pro, remember how we created markers for every single one of those freeze frames? The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and click and drag and bring in all of those Photoshop files. And you're just gonna go ahead and align when your person shows up with the actual freeze frame. So I've gone ahead and already done that. Takes a little bit of time, but it looks cool. So once you've got that all laid out, it should look something like this. 
So as we're running in here, each location, I'm showing up. There's a clear and obvious problem with this current footage. And the problem is that we haven't rotoscoped ourselves out. We haven't cut ourselves out. So we're behind all of these layers here. These are all separate layers. And now I'm behind the actual process here. The next thing you're gonna wanna have to do is you're gonna wanna go ahead and rotoscope yourself out or cut yourself out of this footage so that you can put yourself on top of all of these frames. And there's a couple ways you can do this. A, you can hop in a cap cut and do this super quickly. There's another one called Runway ML, another online AI software that'll do this for you. Let me show you real quickly how to do this in DaVinci Resolve. You can do this on After Effects too, but I'm just, I'm not too nifty in After Effects. So I'm just gonna hop into DaVinci. All right, so once you're in DaVinci Resolve and you got yourself loaded up in the timeline, you're gonna go to Fusion. You're going to press Shift Space, which comes up with your Select Tool, Magic Mask. We're gonna add this. So basically you're just gonna go ahead and drag, click and drag and draw your person that you want to mask out. That's pretty rough there. And as you'll notice here, it caught this. And so what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and hold down option and get rid of the stuff that I don't want. And this can be as nice as you want it, as precise as you want it or not. I found that it doesn't really matter too much, especially when you end up speed ramping this stuff later. And make sure you click better, define range, I usually keep around like 10. And honestly, that's good enough. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is press track forward and it'll track through the whole thing and hopefully it'll give us a good magic mask of ourselves. All right, once you've masked yourself out, what you're gonna go ahead and do is add another layer underneath. Uh, I'm sure there's an easy way to do this. This is just how I do it. I go ahead and add a solid color, a green color underneath my masked final video. And as you can see here, I have myself the green background. You're gonna go ahead and export this as high quality as you can, usually ProRes. And I'm gonna drag this back into Premiere Pro. So basically it's like a green screened out version of myself running out, just myself keyed out. And you'll see why this is important next. All right, so the final step is you're gonna go ahead and click and drag that keyed out version of yourself on top of your footage. Make sure it's aligned with the actual timing of everything. As you can see here. Same thing. You can even kind of tell it's like not perfect, but that's not too big of an issue. And the last step here is you're gonna put an ultra key on top, select this color. You can clean it up as much as you want. I usually just like soften it just a tad. Now, if we play this through, you'll notice that I'm on top of each duplication. And now we're looking pretty smooth. That's basically the entire effect here. The other thing I like to do is at the very end, I'll add a little cross dissolve. So at the end, right before I finish the clip, I slowly fade away. Obviously the other thing is I've added, I've gone ahead and added some movement and I've done this all in post. So the final step here is I'm gonna go ahead and select all of my, and I'm gonna go right click and nest my scene. So this just makes it one compound clip basically. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and speed ramp and really, to really sell this effect, you wanna give it a little speed ramp. All right, so I've adjusted the speed now so that it just, you're gonna go ahead and want that nice speed ramp, that little extra kick in your duplication. And obviously it looks a little jittery now. To fix this, you can add directional blur or you could go ahead and add an adjustment layer. And there's a plugin called RSMB Pro, Real Smart Motion Blur. And now you have this which in all honesty is good enough. Or we could go ahead and add a little bit of motion into the actual edit here. So what I've gone ahead and do is I've added a transform. And in the transform, I've just keyframed a little bit of motion. So I'm doing a little zoom out in. And then for these parts here, I've just kind of panned, panned to the right, panned to the left, panned to the left. That was a terrible explanation. Just gone ahead and added some random keyframes, just a little jittery movement. You can just go ahead and change the position and scale on these. And once I've changed the position and scale, I've just right clicked, temporal interpolation, auto, bezier, bezier, and I've just keyframed a little movement. The other cool thing about transformers, you want a little motion blur, you go ahead and uncheck use compositions, shutter angle, change it to 180 on the custom shutter angle, and that gives you a nice little blur. Final step, obviously, with any great effect, you need some good sound effects. And I've gone ahead and already done the sound design for this one. It's nothing too crazy. All I've got is I've got, I always like to start with hits or reverse risers in the very beginning. It gives you a little, let me try this element. Boom. And then I'll go ahead and give a couple risers. This one is a film camera whoosh. This one is a build up whoosh. And this is a regular fire torch whoosh. I just like to 
add different sound, like layer sound effects, something that look sound good or just, just. Ooh. That's called the clone effect. So that was the breakdown of the clone effect that I've done here. Nothing super complicated. Again, what you want to do is you want to have a locked off shot. You want some movement. You're going to want to go ahead and then make little keyframes and cut yourself out and then do a little rotoscoping action on top of that. Put that layer on the very top and you've got a pretty cool effect of you cloning yourself through movement. You can add a couple different things to spice it up. You can add a little motion blur, a little fake camera movement using the transform tool in Premiere Pro. There's other tools and other softwares that allow you to just give it a little, little handheld shake to really sell the effect. And finally, some nice sound effects to really bring it all together. If you like the style tutorial, please let me know in the comments. Let me know any other effects you want me to break down. Please like this video, it helps a lot. Please share it to your friends if you think they would like to learn this technique. And most importantly, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.